Hi, this is JB from No The Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus, and this time we are looking into the Psylocke Hero Pack that came just for Marvel Champions, the card game. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so Psylocke comes with a pre-built Justice deck, so first off let's look what cards come in Psylocke's uh, signature set. So first off we have the Alter Ego Psy, Betsy Braddock. So Betsy has a 3 recovery, mutant and psionic traits. A psionic manifestation setup. Put your two Psy energy upgrades into play. Psy knife side face up action. Exhaust one Psy energy upgrade. Uh, shuffle one psionic card from your discard pile into your deck and Betsy's hand size is 6 and 10 hit points. And we will look at the uh, Psy resource cards in a moment, but first let's look at the hero side. So on the hero side we have Psylocke. Psylocke has a 1 toward with an asterisk, 1 attack with an asterisk and 1 defense with an asterisk. And Psionic and Axe Force traded. And the asterisk reads Psy Energy Control. Interrupt. When you use your Psylocke's basic powers toward attack or defense, uh, flip one Psy Energy upgrade. And the hand size is 4 and 10 hit points. So, uh, big change in the hand size, but um, we'll see how, how these abilities function with the uh, upgrade. So, we have two copies of uh, the setup upgrade we put into play. So I'll just flip one over so you can see both at the same time. Uh, on the Psy Knight upgrade side, uh, Psy Energy Traded Weapon a Permanent, Psylocke gets plus one to board. And uh, Hero Resource, Exalt Psy Knife. Uh, Generate a mental resource. You may flip this card, and this has a mental energy resource icon. Then on the other side, uh, we have the Psy Katana. It is a Psy energy and weapon traded permanent, restricted. Psylocke gets plus one attack, and her basic attack gains piercing. And hero resource, exhaust Psy Katana. Generate a physical resource. You may flip this card. So, with this, uh, if you need some special uh, resource type, then you can uh, utilize either the Psy Knight to get the mental resource or the Psy Katana uh, to generate a uh, physical resource. So, with this, uh, even though uh, Psylocke has a four hand size, you have resources on the table with these cards all the time. So those are interesting. Next up, uh, let's start looking at the other cards that come in Psylocke Signature set. So first off we have the uh, Signature Ally Angel. Angel has a 3 cost ally with 1 board and 2 attack. Aerial and Axe Force traded. 3 hit points response after you play Angel from your hand ready your identity and this can be committed as a, a wild resource. So uh, this is a decent ally, uh, the cost is okay uh, and uh, the ability is quite good so I think there are some good combos you can do with Psylocke and Angel. Next we have uh, Fury of Blades there are three copies of this. So, Fury of Blades is a three cost event. Attack and Psyonic traded. Hero action attack. Deal two damage to an enemy. For each Psy knife you control, choose an enemy and confuse it. For each Psy katana you control, choose an enemy and deal two damage to it. And this can be committed as an energy resource. So, with this card, you really need to be mindful of. Uh, what side of the upgrades are facing so if you have uh, if you need to confuse a lot of stuff uh, you can use this 
when you are in uh, or the upgrades are on the side knife side and if you want to just deal uh, extra damage uh, then you need to have them in Psychotana mode. Next up we have uh, mental detection, three copies of this event. So it is a two cost event, Psyonic and four traded, hero action four. Remove one threat from a scheme. For each Psy knife you control, remove two additional threat from that scheme. For each Psy katana you control, draw one card. Again, you need to be mindful when playing this uh, on what side their upgrades are, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Next up, uh, we have uh, Psionic Redirect. Two copies of this card. It is a two cost event. Uh, defense and Psionic Traded. Hero Interrupt Defense. When you would take any amount of damage from an attack or an enemy attack, prevent two of that damage. For each Psy Katana you control, prevent two additional damage. For each Psy Knife you control, confuse that enemy. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So we have uh, events for uh, thwarting, attacking and defending. Next up, uh, as we can see, uh, Psylocke is quite event heavy. So we have uh, two copies of the telepathic suggestion. It is a two cost event, Psyonic traded. Hero interrupt, when you reveal a ca card from the counter deck, cancel it. Re when re uh, cancel it when revealed effects. For each Psy Katana you control, choose an enemy and deal 2 damage to it. For each Psy Knife you control, choose an, a scheme and remove uh, one threat from it, and this can be committed as an energy resource. Then we have a support a training regimen. So, training regimen is a one cost support training traded. Action exhaust training regimen and Search your deck for a skill card and add it to your hand. Shuffle. If you are in hero form, discard one card from your hand. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Okay, well, a bit different kind of support uh, that can be used either in hero mode or uh, in alter ego. Next up, we have uh, an upgrade. Martial Arts Training. It is a one cost upgrade, skill traded, Psylocke gets one, plus one defense. Hero response. After Psylocke defense against an attack, discard martial arts training, ready Psylocke. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Then another upgrade, uh, Psionic training. It is a one cost upgrade, skill traded. Psylocke ignores the guard and patrol keywords. And hero response after Psylocke boards, discard Psyonic training, confuse an enemy. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So the hero response, uh, I think you can decide when you trigger it, so you don't have to. Uh, it is not forced, so you don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's just so you can ignore guard and patrol keywords if you have this in play. Last uh, signature card is uh, two cost upgrade weapons training. It is skill traded. Psylocke gains retaliate one. Hero response after Psylocke attacks. Discard weapon training. Ready each weapon upgrade you control, and this can be committed as a physical resource. So those were all the signature cards. Next, let's look at the uh, rest of the pre-built justice deck. First off, we have Captain Britain. Uh, Captain Britain is a four cost ally with three thwart and three attack, and both have two consequential damage aerial and Excalibur traded, three hit points. And both uh, attack and thwart have asterisk, and Captain Britain takes minus one consequential damage after he thwarts a side scheme or attacks a minion, and this can be com uh, committed as a mental resource. So with Captain Britain you want to be hitting uh, uh, either side schemes or the uh, minions so you don't take extra consequential damage. Next we have Cypher. So Cypher is a two cost ally with one fort and one attack with an asterisk, X-Force traded. 
and two hit points. Response after Cypher attacks and damages a confused enemy, draw one card. And Cypher can be permitted as an uh, energy resource. So another cheap justice ally, which seems quite uh, useful. Next up we have Concussive Blow and uh, I think this is a reprint with new image. There are three copies of this, but I'll read it all the same. Uh, three cost event, attack, hero action, attack, confuse an enemy if you paint this card using a uh, physical resource, deal three damage to that enemy. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Next up we have upside the head, three copies of this in the deck. So uh, upside the head is a one cost event, skill trait that hero responds after your hero makes a basic attack and damages an enemy, confuse that enemy. If that enemy is already confused, stun it instead, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, and next, uh, uh, throughout all of the X4 set, we have received multiples of these uh, player side schemes. So we get one more in Silox pre-built, which is Later Trap. Player side scheme, victory zero, when defeated. Uh, the player who defeated this scheme deals 5 damage per player uh, damage to the villain. And this comes into play with 3 threat per player and costs 1 and can be committed as an energy resource. Okay, well, interesting. Then we have uh, float like a butterfly, uh, butterfly and 3 copies of this. So Float Like a Butterfly is our 2 cost upgrade, uh, play under any player's control, max 1 per player, interrupt when a character you control attacks and confuse an enemy, increase the... Uh, uh, when a player you control attacks a confused enemy, increase the amount of damage by, uh, that attack deals to that enemy by 1, and this can be committed as a physical... Not, uh, physical but an energy resource. Uh, so those were all the justice cards. Uh, we still have a bunch of uh, basic cards. First up we have uh, Pete Wi Wisdom. Uh, Pete Wisdom is a 4 cost ally with 3 fourth uh, with 2 consequential damage and 2 attack with 1 consequential damage. Axe Force traded and 3 hit points. Play only if your identity has the Axe Force traits. A response after you resolve the when revealed effect of a treachery card, heal one damage from keep wisdom, and this can be committed as a mental resource. So, I think this is a really strong card uh, for true solo as you are uh, each round revealing a, a when revealed effect or resolving those. If you don't cancel those, you can heal Pete and keep him on the board, which is quite good. Next up, we have Directed Force, uh, three copies of this. So Directed Force is a zero cost event, skill trait that hero interrupt when you uh, when your hero makes an attack and that uh, when an attack that has a keyword overkill piercing or range, that attack deals two additional damage and max one per attack, and this can be committed as a physical resource. Okay, well, uh, this would have been really, really strong in up as an upgrade, but as a uh, event, it's okay, I think. Well, we'll see when once I get playing with this deck. So, next up we have Soaring Hearts. This is the team up card for Angel and Psylocke. So, Soaring Hearts is a two cost event. Team up Angel and Psylocke, max one per deck. Hero action, search your discard pile and identity specific event. Uh, for an identity specific event and add it to your hand, ready angel and silent, and this can be committed as a wild resource. Then uh, we have again uh, the power of the mind, three copies of this. Uh, so the power of the mind, uh, double the number of resources this card generates while uh, paying for a psionic card, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have IPAC. It is a one cost support vehicle and X Force traded. 
play only if your identity has the X-Force trait. Hero action, exhaust IPAC and deal one face down encounter card to a player. That player draws two cards. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So that's actually quite interesting. You take a bit of a risk and get extra cards, which is of course quite decent in my opinion. Next up we have the X Bunker. So the X Bunker is a two cost support, location and X Force traded. Action exhaust X Bunker and choose a player whose identity has the mutant trait. That player searches the top X cards of their deck for any card where X is the number of side schemes in the victory display and add that card to their hand shuffle. And uh, this can be committed as a energy resource. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is not that strong with uh, Psylocke, but for example, with Cable, who specializes in the uh, side schemes going into the victory display, this could be really good. But not a fan in it in the Psylocke deck. And lastly, we have Telepathy, and there are three copies of this. So Telepathy is a one-cost upgrade, Psionic Superpower traded. Play only if your identity has the Psionic trade, max one per player. Your action bought Exhaust Telepathy and spent two mental resources. Remove two threats from a scheme, and this can be committed as a mental resource. So, uh, I think that's okay. Another way to remove threat from the uh, from schemes by uh, spending resources. Uh, next up, uh, we'll look into the nemesis and the obligations of Silok. First off, we have the obligation body swap. So uh, give to Betsy Braddock player. You cannot flip your psyche and upgrades. When revealed, flip each of your Psy energy upgrades to its Psy katana side and exhaust its alter ego action. Discard one, one psionic card from your hand, discard this obligation. And this has two boost icons. Okay. Then we look into the Nemesis sets. Uh, first up, we have Chimera. So Chimera is a minion with one scheme and one attack, both with Asterixes, Marauder and Psionic Traded and 5 hit points. Force Interrupt. When Chimera activates against you, she gets plus X scheme and plus one X attack for this activation. X is the number of uh, mental resources on cards you control and this has three boost items. So uh, Chimera could potentially be really bad if you have a lot of uh, mental resource cards on the table. Uh, next up we have the Nemesis side scheme. It is the interdimensional plunder. Side scheme uh, when revealed place one threat here for each upgraded play and this has an acceleration icon. Comes into play with two threat per player and has three boost icons. Okay. Next we have Psionic Illusion. So Psionic Illusion is a attachment. Psionic trait that attached to your identity. Force interrupt when you attack an enemy, name a resource type, then discard the top card of your deck. If that card does not have a resource of the name type, change the target of this attack to a friendly character of your choice and discard this card. Ouch. And this has two boost icons. Then, uh, lastly, we have two copies of uh, Telekinetic Dragon. It is a treachery. When revealed, take X indirect damage, where X is the number of mental resources of cards you control. If X is zero, this card gets search. And there's a boost ability icon. So the boost ability reads, choose to either spend a mental resource or confuse your identity. Okay, so... That is the whole preview deck. Lastly, we'll look at the other aspect cards that come in this hero pack. So first off, we have Aggression. Uh, we have Psy Bow Attack. And it is a two-cost event. Attack 
and psionic trait that play only if your hero has the psionic trait hero action. Attack deal 4 damage to an enemy. This attack gains range and can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have the leadership card, which is Domino Ally. So Domino is a 3 cost ally uh, with 1 sword and 2 attack and both with Asterix's Fosse and uh, X Force traded, 3 hit points. And the Asterix is a response after you use one of Domino's basic powers, swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. And this can be committed as a wild resource. Then we have the protection card for this pack. It is the Psy, Flail, Strike and three copies of this in the deck. And it is a two cost event, attack and psionic trait that play only if your identity has the psionic trait. Hero response, attack. After you defend against an attack, enemy, at enemy attack, sorry, uh, deal three damage to that enemy and stun it. And this can be com uh, committed as a uh, energy resource. Okay. Lastly, we have Telekinesis. Three copies of this basic card. So, uh, Telekinesis is a one cost upgrade. Psionic and superpower traded. Play only if your identity has the Psionic trait. Max one per player. Hero action. Exhaust Telekinesis and spend two mental resources. Deal three damage to an enemy. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So this is a mirror card of the telepathy. So this is uh, spent mental resources for damage. And that was mental resources for thwarting. So that was the whole Psylocke hero pack. So I'm really interested in uh, sleeving this deck and trying it out. And I'm thinking I'll try it out uh, in the second scenario from the next evolution box and we'll see how Psylocke's, uh, Psylocke does in that scenario with this pre-built deck so hope you guys found this hero pack focus interesting thanks for watching and until next time